Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, how does the five-factor model personality relate to the development of mental health disorders? So can personality traits predict mental health disorders or symptoms of mental health disorders? There's a lot of information available about this, and the shorter answer is yes, there is some connection, some association between personality traits and mental health symptoms. But there are also certain personality traits that don't seem to have hardly any association with mental health symptoms. So first, let's take a look at the five-factor model. I've covered this in other videos. I'll go over it briefly here. The five-factor model can be remembered by the acronym OCEAN, O-C-E-A-N. So you have openness to experience. So people that are open to experience are intellectually curious, adventurous, tend to experience emotions intensely, and tend to fantasize. Then we have conscientiousness. Individuals that are conscientious tend to be low on impulsivity and highly organized. Extroversion is the next one. Extroversion is related to positive emotions and being social. Agreeableness, the fourth trait, Agreeableness is associated with valuing cooperation over competition, being trusting, and being modest. And the last personality trait, neuroticism. And neuroticism, high neuroticism, is associated with unstable mood. So an individual who's high in neuroticism is more easily upset than somebody who's low in neuroticism. So how do these personality traits tie in with mental health symptoms or mental health disorders? Well, first, it's important to understand that we're going to see more mental health symptomology on the extremes of these personality traits. And this is more true for personality disorders than non-personality disorders, but it's really true across the board for mental health disorders. So individuals who are toward the middle of any of these personality traits would be less likely to have mental health symptoms. So I'm going to be looking at the extremes here. So let's start with openness to experience. At the high end of openness to experience, there's an association with schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. There's also some association in research with schizotypal personality disorder. That's a little more controversial. And even with schizophrenia and bipolar disorder, there is research that shows it's not associated. So there's mixed findings when it comes to openness to experience. At the low extreme of openness to experience, we sometimes see depressive symptoms. That's more associated with depressive symptoms. Then moving to conscientiousness. At the high end of conscientiousness, somebody who's at the extreme high of conscientiousness, we see an association with obsessive compulsive disorder. At the low levels, the extremely low levels of conscientiousness, we see an association with substance use disorders, antisocial personality disorder, and depressive disorders. Moving to extroversion, at the extreme highs of extroversion, there's an association with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and we see certain attention-seeking behaviors at that extreme. At the low end of extroversion, we see depressive symptoms and anxiety symptoms. Next, we have agreeableness. Now, at the high end of agreeableness, there are some dependent traits, not necessarily dependent personality disorder, but just dependent traits. And at the low end of agreeableness, that's not really associated with really any mental health symptoms. Interestingly, agreeableness altogether as a personality trait has very low association at the high end or the low end with any mental health disorders or any mental health symptoms. This brings me to neuroticism. Now, neuroticism is a little different because Neuroticism is the most strongly associated with mental health symptoms and mental health disorders. At the high end of neuroticism, we see an association with depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, borderline personality disorder, and really almost all of the personality disorders. At the low end of neuroticism, we see more risk-taking behaviors. Now, it's worth noting we also see more risk-taking behaviors at the high end of extroversion and the low end of conscientiousness. So of all the personality traits, agreeableness predicts mental health symptoms the worst. 
and eroticism predicts mental health symptoms the best. Now, when talking about the five-factor model, specifically with personality disorders, there has been a lot of discussion over many years about not using the current definitions of personality disorders, but rather switching to the five-factor model as a way of categorizing the behaviors and the symptoms that we see associated with personality disorders. It's not really clear where this discussion is going. As I mentioned, it's been going on for a long time. But there are some advantages and disadvantages to moving away from the classic definition of personality disorders over to the five-factor model. In terms of disadvantages, the five-factor model, to use that to diagnose mental health disorders, would be extremely complex. One model that I was looking at had over 100 maladaptive traits that would have to be mapped for each individual. So that would be much more complex than the list of criteria we see, for example, with paranoid personality disorder or schizoid personality disorder. One of the advantages to this, however, with this increased complexity, would be that a diagnosis under the five-factor model would be individualized and precise. Another feature I like using the five-factor model over the personality disorder model is that it's much more positive. So the five-factor model personality, when those traits were assessed with an individual, yes, you'd certainly talk about some of the maladaptive traits, but you could also talk about some of the positive traits, some of the personality traits that are associated with productivity and longer life expectancy and better socializing and deep analytic thought. So we could talk about positivity and, of course, talk about some of the areas that need to be addressed in terms of maladaptive traits. Now, again, this is just a theory. The five-factor model being used for personality disorders could be something that never happens or it could be far in the future. But it's an interesting discussion. And whether or not that specifically happens, whether personality disorders are abandoned and the five-factor model is moved in, I think we can still learn a lot from the five-factor model. And there has been continued research to see how the five-factor model relates to mental health symptoms and mental health disorders. I think it's worthwhile this research continues. I hope you found this description of the five-factor model and mental health disorders to be interesting. Thanks for watching.